What's going on guys, Victor here with another brand new video and I gotta talk about the co-main event of UFC 260 Tyron Woodley versus Vicente Luque. This match might be fireworks or it might be a one-way manslaughter for a certain individual during that fight. Obviously both these guys are new are in the 170 pound war to weight division so it's going to be an interesting matchup one fighter is streaking upwards while another fighter is streaking downwards i'm talking about tyron woodley the former war to weight champion of the world he hasn't been himself lately he hasn't been any winning any fights lately he's on a three fight losing skid he obviously lost to kamara uzman then he lost to gilbert burns then he lost to Colby Covington. It's on a three-fight losing streaks, everybody. That's that's not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. Obviously, he was dominated in all three fights, and that's just not a good look at all, especially if you're a U in the UFC. And most most fighters in the UFC, if they do lose three fights in a row, they do tend to get cut. Most fighters that don't really have a big name. Tyron Woodley has a big name. He used to dominate in the UFC with the weight division. He used to be the champion. He knocked out Robbie Lawler viciously in the first round to attain that championship. He defended it a couple of times against some really good fighters. Stephen Thompson twice, Damian Maya, Darren Till. All those guys are crying out loud. He basically dominated all those fighters. And he had the title. He had a very good title reign until Kamaru Usman came in and showed the world what he was really about and took that title right from Tyron Woodley, and Tyron Woodley has been a shell of, him, of his own self. Obviously, Vincente Luque has been on the roll. The last fighter that he has lost to was Stephen Thompson. It was a back-and-forth affair, but Stephen Thompson was able to get his hand raised at the end of the day. Luque took way too much damage, but since then, he's been able to come back with a couple wins against Nico Price and Randy Brown, both those fights ending by KO. So he is a very dangerous man. And we all know that whenever Vincente Luque gets inside that octagon, he is trying to kill you no matter what. This guy is an assassin. He is a trained killer. He goes literally balls to the wall. This guy, he's a maniac. And he's just the, not a lot of fighters out here have the Mexican style. And when we talk about the Mexican style, we're talking about something that is very rough, rugged, action-seeking at all times. And Vicente Luque is the epitome of the Mexican style. And his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is no joke either. And the same goes for Tyron Woodley. Tyron Woodley is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's very underrated when it comes to his BJJ. Obviously, he is the far superior wrestler because he used to wrestle Division One college wrestling over in the University of Missouri. Mizzou, for short... And he was able to wrestle with a couple of great guys. Obviously, Michael Chandler, who's going to fight for the UFC lightweight championship of the world very, very soon. And he also wrestled alongside Ben Askren, one of the most elite college wrestlers in the history of college wrestling itself, and an Olympic wrestling a wrestler. So obviously, Tyron Woodley has a lot of accolades when it comes to his wrestling. And he is a very, very strong individual. If you look at his physique, the guy is built... He's built like an Olympic god, for crying out loud. I don't like to use that with a lot of fighters, but Tyron Woodley is always shredded when he gets into that octagon. Tyron Woodley is always shredded when it comes to even outside the octagon as well with his everyday life. The guy is always training. He's always in the gym. The thing I don't like about Tyron Woodley the most is that he's just been away too long doing these other endeavors, whether it's his music career, whether it's his movie career, whether he's trying to establish businesses outside of the octagon so he has something to lie on after his mixed martial arts career is over. He's just been paying way too much attention to all that, and he hasn't been 100% focused on mixed martial arts, on the sport that he's supposed to be focused on at all times, and it's cost him the last couple of fights, and it's also cost him a little bit of his health as well. Obviously, we all know whenever you go into a fight, you leave a little bit of your soul in there. And Tyron Woodley has left a lot of his soul in the octagon during the last couple of fights. So obviously, when I talk about power, Tyron Woodley definitely has more power than Vicente Luque. Tyron Woodley can go in there and knock Vicente out 
in the first or second round if he wants to, but he needs to believe in here first that he can knock him out. He needs to believe not only in himself, but in his soul that he can go out there and prove to the whole world that he's not finished. And Vincente Luque's job is to basically take all that belief, crumble it up in like a piece of paper and throw it in the trash and knock him out. Someone might go to sleep. I believe there's going to be a finish during this fight. Obviously, Tyron Woodley was finished during his last fight against Kobe Covington because of a broken rib, and the pain was too excruciating for him to continue on. Vincente Luque, I haven't seen him get KO'd in a very, very, very long time, and he is an individual that is a human sponge. He likes to take a lot of damage, and when you squeeze that sponge... And in this case, when we squeeze Vicente Luque, he likes to dish it back out on his opponents. Just ask all these guys that he's been knocking out lately. It's absolutely insane. And if it weren't for that loss to Wonderboy Thompson, Vicente Luque could be a top five fighter right now. But he took that loss, he took that setback, and he's trying to get back into the He's trying to get into the top five, top four of the UFC welterweight rankings. And what they won against Tyron Woodley, he can find himself in there. But obviously, if I'm Tyron Woodley, don't get inside. Don't get into a fist fight with Vicente Luque. Get him down no matter what. We've all seen what's happened to Tyron Woodley when he's tried to engage in the fist fight against the majority of these opponents so far during his last three fights. He has been outstruck by Kamara Usman, by Gilbert Burns, by Colby Covington. So he's going to have to utilize this wrestling. He tried utilizing it against Colby Covington. But Colby Covington was another Division One wrestler from the, from the Oregon State University. And both of the wrestling basically canceled out each other until Colby Covington was able to get a couple of takedowns on Tyron Woodley. And that just spelled the, the, the end of the fight right there. The takedown, the pressure, and the ground and pound was too much for Tyron Woodley. So if I'm Tyron and I've got the advantage when it comes to the wrestling, when it comes to the grappling, I'm going to use it no matter what instead of trying to stay on my feet, bang with Vicente Luque, who's literally a brawler. He's got the Mexican style, like I just said, and risk getting knocked out pretty early. If I'm Vicente Luque, make sure you're anticipating the takedown at all times, get the underhooks in there or the overhooks, get the wrestler ready and sprawl as hard as you can, putting all of your weight, especially the majority of the weight on your hip against Tyron Woodley's neck to prevent the takedown from being executed. Also, if I'm Vicente Luque, if I'm going to take this fight down to the ground, you've got to be the one on top because Woodley's a strong individual. If Woodley's on top, then he can be able to rain some nasty run and pound, but also... If I'm Vicente Luque, I can also rain a lot of ground and pound at the same time as well if I, if I put Tyron Woodley down in that position. Obviously, Vicente Luque happens to be in that same camp as Kamara Usman, as Gilbert Burns. So he's literally training with two guys that have dominated against Tyron Woodley in the past. So obviously, Vicente Luque is already going to know everything that Tyron Woodley is going to throw at him. And I haven't seen a lot of changes from Tyron Woodley's camp. If I were Tyron, I would have changed camps. I would have gone back to American Top Team. That's where Tyron Woodley started his career. And eventually, he ended up moving from American Top Team to Rufus Sport over in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Obviously, it makes a whole lot more sense for him because... Tyron Woodley is from the Midwest, and Milwaukee happens to be a city in the Midwest, so it's a whole lot closer to home, and less lot farther than Boca Raton, Florida, all the way in the south. So obviously, if I were Tyron Woodley, I would have went back to American Top Team, worked with a lot of good sparring partners, worked with a lot of great coaches, because like I said, ATT is the best mixed martial arts gym in the whole entire world. For professional athletes to go to. They have everything you need. All right there. In their facility. And he didn't. I don't know why. But I hope, I'm i just hopeful that he was, he's able to change up the game plan. And I'm hopeful that he can be able to get this win. But I just got to go with Vicente Luque when it comes to this fight. His pressure is like no other. His pressure to get you into the corner. Get you in against the fence. And just... Rain some nasty punches and his volume. His volume speaks to no volume, uh, no volumes itself, no pun intended, because the guy's a beast. He will throw everything in the kitchen sink. He will, the, the Mona Lisa, the 
the the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building. He'll throw everything at you just to knock you out, just to finish you before those three rounds are up. You know? Obviously, Vicente Luque hasn't been in a five-round fight. No. All his fights have been in the third round, and the majority of his fights and have barely even gone to the third round because he likes to put his opponents away during the first or second round. So I'm going to go with Vicente Luque. I think he's going to fit, beat Tyron Woodley, even though Tyron Woodley has already looked shredded ahead of this fight, and he already looks like a monster, and he looks like he's on a man in a mission. He looks like he's going to kill someone once he gets inside that octagon, but Vicente Luque is just a natural-born killer. No offense to Carlos Condit, but... Vicente Luque, he is a natural born killer, and he is the epitome of the Mexican style and everything that the Mexican style is all about. Obviously, action seeking, he's action packed fighter through the first minute all the way to the last minute of the majority of his fights, if not all of his fights. So I appreciate you guys for watching this video. I'm going with Vicente Luque by TKO. This week, March 27th, UFC 260. Enjoy the fights, guys. I hope you guys enjoy this fight. I'm most likely not going to buy the pay-per-view just because of that co-main event, the original one, that was canceled. But, hope you guys buy it, hope you guys like it a lot, and just stay safe, stay blessed. We're almost out of this pandemic, guys. I know I keep on saying it, but we're pretty damn close to it. So, take it easy, guys.